This is Alexei Gudesman for Muse News. The headlines this week. The San Francisco Conservatory of Music is buying Opus 3 Artists, an international agency that was about to go bankrupt. This is the first time that a conservatory buys an artist management. The reason why they're doing it? Well, first of all, they're rich. Also, we're guessing that the future pupils at the school will get a free international career with their diploma, which during a pandemic literally means that they can stay at home just like the rest of us. This deal was put into place with the help of the conductor Marin Aslop, who says, whenever two dynamic organizations come together in order to achieve more, it's a cause of celebration. I don't know if she actually talks like that, but... I'm sure she will also celebrate in the future when everyone at Opus 3 will kiss her feet for not having them out on the streets and booking her the hugest well-deserved tours. Additionally, there are rumors of uh, that the super wealthy San Francisco Conservatory will next acquire JC Penney, Brooks Brothers, Wirecard, and Hertz. That would mean students there would receive discounts on crappy shirts and cheap jewelry, credit cards that you can't actually pay with, and cars for hire where the insurance will cost them more than the worth of the shitty used car itself. After a seven month break, the Greek National Opera in Athens is trying to entice the audience to return. After considering to give out free tzatziki, moussaka and tara masalata, they realized that great music would do the trick just as well. The Albanian soprano with the curious rapper-like sounding name Amonella Jeho <laughs> is overtaken with emotions every time there is at least one person watching her sing. However, she's hoping for an audience of at least two in months to come. Emonella is quoted to say, before and after every show, I'm in tears because I feel so lucky for being there and I kiss the stage every time I get applause. COVID measures have been taken and the stage has been carefully disinfected for Emonella to be able to make out with the floor. Two-time Grammy-nominated jazz pianist and composer Elio Villafranca has become an author of his first children's book, Who Ate the Pie? Who Ate the Pie gives children an interactive way to learn to recognize animals by the geometrical shapes of the footprints and by the sound each animal makes. This will be a great help since it was so damn confusing in the past. But there are more children's books released by musicians. For example, the violinist Marie Dingler from the duo Twilins. Her book about a squirrel and a hedgehog called Hurra, wir spielen ein Konzert, or in English, Yippee, we're playing a concert, is simply adorable and has fans like the violin virtuoso Anne-Sophie Mutter praising it. In the book, a squirrel tries to explain how to give a concert while the hedgehog is being a bit of a prick. Billie Eilish, arguably the most annoyingly talented musician of the decade, who simply cannot touch anything or any song without it becoming a huge hit, has decided to turn her online concerts into a virtual, multi-dimensional, interactive and immersive 3D experience, which is basically way better than life itself. Using multiple cameras and state-of-the-art XR technology, the event is a virtual concert in a 3D rendered environment. Additionally, we are hoping to see the reenactment of the sinking Titanic, the Battle of Hastings, and a bunch of life-sized Jurassic Park dinosaurs, while Billy sings her soulful and brilliantly postmodern funky songs with her brother Phineas and touring drummer Andrew Marshall. Tickets are available on Eilish's website and proceeds from select items of the merchandise go towards Crew Nation, a charitable fund to help support the crew members affected by the pandemic. Because if you think only us musicians are fucked by not touring, think of all the people putting up the rigging and building the stages who have been out of work. In a shocking revelation, we have found out that the Church of England is co-owner of Beyonce's single ladies, Rihanna's umbrella and Justin Timberlake's sexy bag. The church is one of the hundreds of investors in a company called 
hypnosis with a G, which for the past three years has been hungrily snapping up the rights to thousands of hit songs. So far it has spent more than one billion dollars on music by Mark Ronson, Chic, Barry Manilow, Blondie and the likes. So every time any of those songs get played on the radio or placed in a film or TV show, the Church of England gets money, which makes Boys to Men and Bobby Brown deeply religious. Hypnosis Canadian founder Merck Mercuriadis says that the music he bought is more valuable than gold or oil. These great proven songs are very predictable and reliable in their income streams. I really can't do a Canadian accent. If you take a song like the Eurythmic Sweet Dreams or Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer, you are talking three to four decades of reliable income. So now the UK Jesus Club, also known as the Church of England, is literally living on a prayer. In old times, the church commissioned masses. Now they take their cut from twerking. Well, whatever works. And income is indeed increasing, as Spotify users increased by a monthly average of 22% between March and July. So streaming royalties have also increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. Great news for all the musicians, since their income on Spotify has now increased by a staggering $2.20. Former Beatles Sir Paul McCartney has announced the release of a new album made entirely alone during lockdown in his own home between hordes of toilet paper and cans of baked beans. Sir Paul cooked up the new songs by singing them over a guitar and piano accompaniment and overdubbing them with bass guitar and drums. He is considering adding virgin olive oil, balsamic vinegar and sea salt to taste. So it turns out he did not need a little help from his friends. Confronted with rumors that at 78 he may consider retiring, he said, everything I do is always supposed to be my last. When I was 50, that's his last tour. And it was like, oh, is it? I don't think so. It's the rumor mill, but that's okay. The most famous rumor is of course that Sir Paul McCartney is in fact actually dead and was secretly replaced by a lookalike. Sir Paul himself has recently confirmed this conspiracy theory, saying, When we did Abbey Road, I was dead, so everything else is a bonus. See you back here again next week. If you subscribe to my channel, then the world will be a better place. Well, not really, but it will help me. So please subscribe.